Hello and welcome to News Central Now. I'm Darshan Usman. The top story is this hour. Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria sacks eight directors, 32 others. Edo State Governor swears in Godwins as his deputy. Rwanda's president defends M23 rebels' actions in DR Congo. Details of these stories and more shortly. We begin in West Africa, where the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Yemika Doso, has sacked a fresh batch of 40 staff, mostly from the Development Finance Department, in furtherance of its ongoing restructuring. Our deputy directors and assistant directors were mostly affected, with 22 from the Development Finance Department and the remaining 18 from the Medicals and Procurement Services Department. Amongst those affected were eight directors, 10 deputy directors, five assistant directors, two principal managers, and two senior managers. With the latest number of affected staff, the total has now reached 67. Recall that not less than 27 members of staff, most of them directors at the Central Bank of Nigeria, were affected by the first batch of dismissals. Now to discuss this, I'm joined by economist Akim Fatunke. Good evening, Akim. Thank you so much for joining me on the news. Thank you very much, Dashen. It's a pleasure to be here. Good evening, Nigerians. The pleasure is mine. Now, uh, what impact, Akim, do you think the removal of these directors and employees you know, is expected to have on the operations and the stability of the CBN? Well, on the face value, Dashen, uh, it, it just uh, sits well with the same message that Dr. Yemi Cardoso has been enunciating since he assumed um, the samurai position in CBN, and that is monetary policies, taming inflation, core areas of the CBN functions, no more or no less. And I like to say to you that, you know, the factors of production, people talk about capital, people talk about land, people talk about some other resources. The most important resource is the human factor. Human resources are just like the neck, mm. determines where the neck will shift to and, and otherwise. So it could be positive, it could be, it could be negative. So in my honest opinion, I think it sits very pretty with the um, vision of the CDN for the monetary that we are going to go away, radical departure from what we used to do before. Now we have some 67 uh, um, within a space of less than a month, giving strength and direction that development finance is not the focus of, um, of CBN. Micro nano financing that has taken 10 trillion, according to CBN government, 10 trillion. I want to ask you, Dachin, I want to ask Nigerians, what is the total budget for Nigeria? What is the total budget for Lagos states? What is the total budget for Kano State, for River State, for any state of Nigeria in that consideration? So the CBN governor has clearly stated, I do not have the competency, I do not have the time to now take monies into all these areas and we are not get, getting enough returns. I am prepared to do the appropriate clap from the monetary authorities to advise government Hopefully, from the other policy stream, we can begin to, to produce. So uh, it's all over okay. the place, uh, whether it's a private sector, whether it's a public sector, when you are more than adequate for requirements, uh, you will naturally um, have to, to do away with it. All right, and okay. It's yeah. Clearly, focus on it. All right. Now, you did say that, you know, the dismissals are in line with what uh, Cardoso has been saying for a while and also his objectives. But then what procedures were followed in the dismissal process? And were there any legal or procedural challenges raised during the process? 
that changed so that I, 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 I touch your question from, from the back. Right. Clearly, like I said, procedurally. And who, whoever wants to come to equity must come with strong hands. Now, those that were taken to FSS 2020 awaiting their next call, when they were sacked, I recall two of those directors accepted their fate. And right now they are facing the EFCC. Five others raised a query. What have we done? We are not a mafia led directors. We merely implemented what the board asked us to implement and not necessarily a mafia led thing. Again, you get into what you call a thin line between what you are asked to do, what you should do regularly um, as, as a process. And even if you are asked to do it, make sure that uh, you do proper documentations to say, Perhaps I disagree with what is happening here, but look at that 6.2 million heads that happened in the CBN um, branch in Abuja. It's been revealed allegedly that many of these directors, assistant directors, were part and parcel of what was said was a gradual hasting of taking our money in colluding and recolluding to take her money out, unfortunately, you are going to be affected. Now, if you look at rule 0304, you know, 22 of the public service rules, it says that if you are in public service, you are not permitted to go take up an employment, a national assembly, go to run for governor. However, allegedly, we are beginning to hear that some of the um, albeit have, you know, affected directors, maybe because they belong to the APC, as an example, and they are saying exactly as it is. They went out and they are back. Are we showing that the sort of democles is being fair on all concerned? And in any case, what about the compensation package? It's not just enough for you to say these people are in excess of requirements. Have you discussed their package? I want to believe that mm. will have been discussed. Okay. Have you have you decided that you are going to implement it in a way? Don't forget, Sedashin, we are in a throes of losing about 200 years of cognate experience of some of these trained staff uh. that if we are not careful and we don't do the management of change properly, we may lose out. So you will be seeing to be fair. And finally, I want to also say that uh, it's also been alleged, and we must say it, maybe not necessarily direct, directly, we have an acting director coordinator of currency. <laughs> okay? Iyemi Sholaja. His appointment has not been approved, and it's been alleged that he's signing the currency. Is that the procedure? Even if you say that is the procedure, you must be seen to be, to, to be above board. People should not be able to now then pull these the strings at your side. You must be speak sparkling clean so that it's not seen as if um, you, are being, you, are, you are witch hunting. If you look at this as the seven, I think they are equally spread um, from different parts and different religions. So people cannot say, maybe, you know, I mean, you are, you are trying to be, be offensive. I will be interested to see if there are going to be replacements. Okay. In certain, it's not the empty the kind of people mm. that will come under what I call competence to drive it to the next level. But so far, I think the same CBN governor is winning my heart, and I'm talking about um, about me personally, and hopefully if the other club mm. okay, um, is appropriately met and will begin to produce, I think Nigeria oh. is going to be in a truce of winning ways again. All right, uh, Mr. Fatunke, I think, uh, you know, while uh, a lot of people might actually have different opinions about this, the most important thing is that, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, overhaul actually is effective. That's the most important it, it thing. It may, yes, the effectiveness of the it overall is. is what people are actually on for because there have been so many policies, there have been so many moving around, 
but the effectiveness of the implementation is what people actually are for. But thank you so much uh, for joining me and speaking to me on this. Thank you very much. You know, effectiveness and efficiency. There will be pushback. No doubt about that. But you need to be focused and need to be fair and equitable. Thank you very much. Dashi. Thank you very much. Sir. All right, now we move to politics, where the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 election, Peter Obi, has reacted to media reports that following his alleged unhappiness with the leadership crisis, he may defect ahead of the 2027 election. The, Labour, the Nigerian Labour Congress, through its spokesman, Benson Upa, had said the former Anambra state governor was free to leave uh, the LP, noting that the Congress would not stand in his way if he chose to leave. However, while answering questions raised by journalists in Gombe State, shortly after donating a borehole to the Ram Market in TK Pantami, Obi Alade fears that he might head to the Social Democratic Party to pursue his ambition. While reacting to the possible collaboration with former Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rafai, the LP candidate said he is more interested now in Nigeria's success today than tomorrow. Now to discuss this, I'm joined by Labour Party's governorship candidate in Edo State, Monday Mawa. Hello, Monday. Thank you so much for joining me on the news. Thank you. Good evening, and thanks for having me. All right. So, what is your perspective think, on? Let me the... quickly correct something. I'm not the deputy. I'm not the governorship candidate in Edo. Okay. The governorship candidate is Barista Andasi Asemota. I'm the deputy governorship candidate. Oh, okay. Thank you for that correction. All right. So, yes. but go ahead and tell us uh, what is your perspective on the recent media reports suggesting a possible mass defection from the Labour Party. Well, I don't think I'm not really seeing any form of mass defection from the Labour Party. But of course, we all had in the news of Peter intention or making so as some new idea that he might likely move to another party. I think we had that the media was awash with that a particular insinuation sometime last week that he might be moving to another place. But I'm happy he came up here today to see well. I am not, I'm not, that is not in my plan. I'm seeing Labour Party. But the point is this, I think one thing would be made clear. Labour Party is bigger than any single individual. Yes, we are happy in having everybody in Labour Party, but to have views is no longer comfortable with Labour Party. Of course, the Nigeria Constitution 1999 as amended clearly allows for right of association, right of movement. So if you, decide to say, okay, today I'm no longer, I'm dumping Labour Party for another political party. Well, there is no cause for alarm. Labour Party will always be there. Like the popular saying that the soldier go, soldier come, the barrack will always remain there. But don't, also don't forget, Peter Obi came from, uh, was formerly in Abga. From Abga, he joined the Labour, he uh, defected to PDP. Then from PDP, he came to join us. He met all of us in Labour Party. So, if today is he going to move to other, another party, he's free, he's entitled to it, he's, he has the right and nobody will force him to stay. But I can tell you one thing for free, that Labour Party has come to stay. And we are going, to, we are getting stronger by the day. Notwithstanding some of the little internal crises here and there, it is peculiar, it is common rather to every political party, particularly fast-growing political party. So it's not peculiar to the Labour Party. I'm assuring you that sooner than later, we'll come out of this stronger than we used to be. So people, people, who will receive people defecting the Labour Party? All right, so but then how do you address concerns within the party regarding leadership crisis and their potential impact on party unity and effectiveness? Well, uh, like I said earlier, leadership crisis in party politics is normal don't forget pdp had their own fair share of it apc had their own which led to the removal of uh, comrade Antams, Ali Oshomole, who was the former national chairman of the party and then so they were all of that so one thing that is common or one thing that is constant in life is change 
And of course, don't forget, people most often try to react to change. Abre was a chairman of the party, and we have gotten to a point now that people are saying, look, gentlemen, it is time you step aside. And I think the right thing for me is that Abre should, is, should step aside. It's part of the it's part of growth of, of any system. So all of this, now thank God the Nigerian Labour Congress, who is also a stakeholder in Labour Party, have equally come up to say, well, uh, Obi, uh, sorry, Abure, we have passed vote of no confidence on you. And so that by its by implication, he has totally it, 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 it's no longer acceptable by all. And so Everyone would have expected. Right. So me, if you have, if you ask me, I'll tell him he should excuse himself at this point. It's always better to take a bow when the ovation is loudest. All right, Mr. Mawa. Now, in light of uh, Peter Obi's statements, how does the Labour Party plan to ensure cohesion and stability within its ranks leading up to the 2027 elections? The truth is this: like I said something earlier, I said with or without Peter Obi, Labour Party will be strong and to be intact. Now. There was a, 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 an exclusive elaborate stakeholder meeting today that held in Abuja with members of the Labour Party, the NLC, some of the obedient leaders of the obedient movement. We met today in Abuja, and I can tell you that it was a fantastic meeting, and they were a, a very a strong decision and position taken by stakeholders from NLC, because we recognize the fact that NLC is a stakeholder in Labour Party. Anybody saying NLC has no stake in Labour Party is deceiving himself or herself. We accept the fact that they are stakeholder. So we met today, and I can tell you, I don't want to brief you now of the resolution. I think in an hour or two, the resolution from that stakeholder meeting today will be out for all to see. I can tell you, in no distant time from now, will come back stronger than before. All right, so what measures is the Labour Party taking to address any dissatisfaction or grievances amongst its members in order to prevent further defections or even internal discord? Well, I think first is to, we are, what we are working on at the moment is to resolve the leadership crisis. Because leadership is everything in any organization, be it political party, organization, or whatever. Now, once we are, we are, once we are you, able to do that, now just like we are doing, I can assure you there, are, there is so much going on beneath the, 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 the whole thing without we shouting about it. Some stakeholders, both within Labour Party and outside Labour Party, are also making moves. Don't forget, when we talk about Labour Party, it is bigger than those that are cat carry members of the party. There are other persons that are dissatisfied with what is happening in Nigeria today that have decided to identify themselves with Labour Party, not as a member, but rather as a solution provider. People who have had very high position in the society in the past, they are all putting heads together, joining other leaders of the party and other stakeholders to, to see that this whole thing is resolved. And then once this is resolved, and because what followers are looking for is that they want to see a leadership that, that has integrity, that has the capacity, and that can be accessible, and that can walk their talk. And so, you know, what Labour Party stands for, from its ideology, is workers' welfare. So all we have, all the people want to see is that, they want to see Labour Party leaders come back in a very strong way, so that, we can also provide the necessary and the needed opposition at the moment. Look at, we are having uh, the, the, the just increased electricity tariff, uh, tariff just a few, uh, few days ago. Now we need a strong, yes, I think I had Atiku saying something some days ago, but the point is this, people don't consider the like of Atiku and the other people in their class as talking for the masses. The, the party they see as of today as party for the masses is the Labour Party. And once the leadership issue is resolved, and which I'm assuring you will be resolved in no distant time, I can assure you that we are going to have a kind of surge beyond what we experienced during the build-up to the 2023 election. 
and leadership the labor party will become the pride of the town again okay. and you discover people will run into it again all right well thank you so much for joining me on the news labor party deputy governorship uh, candidates in edo state monday mawa thank you so much thank you very much the pleasure to be here News Central now returns after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Edo State's Governor, Southern Nigeria, Godwin Obasaki, has sworn in Omobayo Godwins as new Deputy Governor of the state. Omobayo replaced Philip Shaibu, who was earlier impeached by the State House of Assembly on Monday morning. Shaibu was impeached by the House of Assembly after the adoption of the report of Justice S.A. Omonua retired lead impeachment panel. The panel was set up by the Chief Judge of Edo State to investigate allegations of misconduct and perjury against Shaibu. Now, 18 out of the 20 lawmakers that attended the plenary on Monday voted in favor of the impeachment, while one voted against it. Meanwhile, the former Deputy Governor Shaibu has reacted to his impeachment by the House. To the members of the Dose House of Assembly who have chosen to forsake their oath of office and participate in this charade, I say this. History will judge Ashley for your betrayal of the people who elected you to represent their interests. But know this, you do not have the power to silence the voice of justice and truth. I call upon the judiciary and all relevant authorities to intervene and uphold the principles of justice and fairness. Let the truth prevail over lies. Let the rule of law triumph over lawlessness. I am confident that the legal system will vindicate me and expose the sham that has been orchestrated against me. I want to reaffirm my commitment to the people of Edo State, to the values that bind us together as a collective. I will not be deterred or intimidated by those who seek to subvert our democracy. Earlier, legal practitioner Dennis Osaratin was on the news to discuss this. The deputy governor was, um, the former deputy governor was, among other things, accused of, you know, di 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 divulging, you know, official secrets and gross misconduct. Right, and the uh, sequence of those allegations, a panel of seven was set up by the Chief of those states. The panel commenced hearing, gave ample opportunity for the former governor to state his own side of the story. And at the end of their proceedings or their investigations, they submitted the report of the House of Assembly, and the rest is history at the state. Because whatever will amount to gross misconduct. That is defined by the House of Assembly. And I've also defined that uh, the Deputy Governor has committed acts that can be defined as gross misconduct that invariably or ultimately led to the impeachment of the former Deputy Governor. Drama in Nigeria's opposition to the People's Democratic Party and some aggrieved lawmakers from the House of Representatives have called on the acting national chairman of the party, Umar Damagum, to step aside and allow another party faithful from the North Central to take over the party's leadership. The lawmakers accused the party's acting national chairman of anti-party activities and planting agents of the All Progressives Congress as members and leaders of the PDP local government caretaker committees in Rivers State and 10 other states of the country. They threatened to boycott the all-party activities, resign their membership, and seek new alliances elsewhere if the alleged list of APC agents are not withdrawn. Imagine the suffering of Nigerians because PDP as opposition does not have direction due to the activities of Damagu. This is very disheartening. Disheartening because this is a man who is not supposed to be in the office in the first place. He was only constitutionally allowed to step in hold the fort and midwife the process through quit the north central zone where the chairmanship of the party was originally zoned to present another person who will complete the slot of north central now 
not only did Damago hold tight onto the seat for over a year now, he has abandoned the responsibility of the office of chairman of BDP and is very comfortable serving APC interests. Mr. Damagu went ahead and received a list of APC agents and announced them as members and leaders of PDP local government Kiatika committee, homes only in rivers and partially in at least 10 states. This is a direct attempt to kill the PDP and ensure it goes into extinction. Let us call on Damagu once again. Damagu, 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 how many times did we call you? Voices have risen from the National Assembly to speak out and stop you. You have a chance to resign immediately, leave or be embarrassed out of the party. The Coalition for Truth and Justice has welcomed the proposed probe of Umar Ganduje's tenure as Kano State Governor. Now, the coalition at a press conference on Monday described it as a positive step towards accountability and transparency in governance. Obinna Francis, the convener of the coalition, however, charged Governor Abba Yusuf to extend the probe to other notable individuals in the state, such as former Governor Rabi Ukonkwaso. Francis emphasized that selective justice is a threat to society everywhere in the world, hence the failure to investigate Kwankwaso and others will be seen as biased and political. We, the Coalition for Truth and Justice, would like to address a recent call for a probe into the former governor of Kano State, Honorable Abdullahi Umar Kanduji. While we welcome this development as a step towards accountability and transparency, we strongly emphasize that selective justice is a threat to society everywhere in the world. Therefore, we urge Governor Abba Yusuf to ensure that the probe is not biased and that it extends to other relevant individuals, including Rabiu Kwankwaso, if he is truly committed to upholding justice. The Judicial Commission of Inquiry set up by the state government to investigate the immediate past administration in the state ought to start their investigation right from 1999 to 2003 and 2011 to 2015, when 70% of government properties were sold or fraudulently allocated to friends and families, and not just focusing on only 2011 to 2015. But it is unfortunate to bring to our notice that the magnanimous sharing of the state assets happened right under the nose of Abba Kabir Yusuf when he was the Commissioner for Works, Housing and Transport of Kano State. Gender inequality continues to widen the education gap between boys and girls, making it important to address the subject of inequality using an intersectionality lens and integrates gender into all stages of educational sector planning, according to experts. News Central's Omolola Ololade in this report tells us more. Gender disparity and inequality in education are one manifestation of exclusion in Nigeria's education systems, a situation that has made many girls less likely to have access to participate in and complete their education. Although gender inequality continues to widen the education gap across the country, the picture is even bleaker in the northern part of the country. The education deprivation in northern Nigeria is driven by various factors, including economic barriers and sociocultural norms and practices that discourage attendance and formal education, especially for girls. Most of the people, they look at the um, uh, possibility of not investing on the girl child education because most of the time the perception from the communities uh, is investing in girl child education is a waste because the thinking is at the end of the day she's just going to get married so why will I waste much fun in sponsoring her education and so on and so forth and then that's leave them with the uh, prioritizing the boy child rather than the girl child. According to UNESCO, there are over 20 million out-of-school children widely distributed across Nigeria, and 60% of this population are adolescent girls. However, 
Educationist and girl child advocate urged the government to ensure the implementation of policies that help keep all children, especially girls, in school. The way people get to believe that a girl child is not meant to be in school or a girl child is not meant to live freely, she's meant to be in the kitchen or be in a house. And then the second one is poverty. Poverty is one of the major causes why uh, mostly girls have been married in northern Nigeria. And then the other one is gender discrimination, whereby girls have been discriminated from their rights to um, attain their full potentials. Our campaign is saying remove hidden fee, amend the Universal Basic Education Act, and ensure compulsorily that girls and boys, particularly girls, go to school and access free 12-year education. It becomes critical to recognize the urgent need to ensure equal access to quality education for all and remove barriers to education for girls and young women while strengthening gender-responsive policies in the educational sector. In Lagos, for News Central, Omolola Ololade. Thank you, Lola, for that report. Now, Nigerian-British travel vlogger Kwelumi Nubi has finally completed her solo trip from London to Lagos after traveling for 68 days, driving through 18 countries and the Sahara Desert. Before taking up this challenge, Kwelumi had visited over 80 out of the 193 countries in the world with which she creates content that highlights various aspects of travel. News Central's Adesha Waudushoga reports. And I am solo driving from London to Lagos. Before now, Balumi Nubi was only a Nigerian travel enthusiast and vlogger. But now the 28-year-old has gone ahead to write her name in the book of history after completing a solo drive from London to Lagos, Nigeria, a journey that took 68 days. She's now the first black woman to complete this feat. Upon arrival, Balumi was received at the Nigerian Bene Republic border by representatives of the Lagos state government and numerous fans. She then headed to the University of Lagos where many of her other fans had been waiting in anticipation for a grand welcome party. Fans, families and friends of Kwelumi Nubi in Nigeria who took up the challenge to take a solo drive from London to Lagos, Nigeria have now gathered at the University of Lagos to welcome her as she arrives to a grand welcoming ceremony. I'm so proud of you. You inspire me. You've inspired me since, you know, uh, you inspired me to take my first Europe trip by myself and you're inspiring me again doing this. So I'm just really proud of you. She set an amazing feat for young women as well. Um, she put she's put Nigeria back on the map again, and we're truly, truly proud of her. The welcome event was attended by the Vice Chancellor of Unilag, Folashadi Ogunshola, Chairman of the NIDCOM, Abike Dabiri Arewa, and the first man to solo drive from London to Lagos through the Sahara Desert in the 1960s, Chief Newton Dubono, Falumi's parent, among other dignitaries. I did it 56 years ago, alone, and I have done it four times after. And I was hoping to do it again, but my age will not allow me. So today, I'm handing over the torch to Palumi. During the course of her journey, Palumi was faced with various challenges which included surviving an accident in Ivory Coast and being denied entry to Sierra Leone. You're still watching News Central now, coming up after the break. Rwanda's president defends M23 rebels' actions in DR Congo. We'll bring you details after the break. The news continues in West Africa, where Usman Sonko, Senegal's new prime minister and former opposition leader, officially has taken office less than a month after being released from prison. Both Sonko and Senegal's new president, Basiru Diomaye Faye, were released from prison around 10 days before the March 24th presidential election, which Faye went on to win. Sonko spearheaded Senegal's anti-establishment movement, but endorsed Faye on the presidential ballot after he was barred from running himself 
due to a defamation conviction. Bonne procédé à la transmission de cette lourde responsabilité entre le premier ministre Sorta, M. Sidi Kikaba, et moi-même. C'est une passation qui s'est passée dans de très bonnes conditions et qui nous permet à partir de cet instant de commencer à exercer la responsabilité qui nous a été confiée. Je le félicite également pour ces longues années de bons et loyaux services à la tête de l'État, au sommet de l'État en tout cas, et surtout ces longues années de service irréprochables puisqu'il a eu à exercer dans différents départements ministériels. Et je n'ai pas souvenance qu'il ait été cité dans autre chose qu'une bonne application des consignes, des directives, mais également de la déontologie. Échangé avec le Premier ministre Ousmane Sonko. Je voudrais pouvoir le féliciter, le souhaiter plein succès dans l'action qu'il aura à mener au profit du Sénégal et des attentes nombreuses qui sont là et que Dieu le guide dans ce travail exaltant qu'il aura à faire. And now we move to East Africa, where Rwanda's President Paul Kagame says the M23 rebel in the Democratic Republic of Congo are fighting against injustice against the Tutsi ethnic group. Kagame made this statement during a media briefing on the sidelines of the commemoration of genocide 30 years on. When asked about allegations of his position on whether Rwanda supports M23 rebels or not, Kagame said the right questions are not being asked space to build we have rwandan communities in the congo who are congolese and by the way these are not just two things it is the same social structure of, of our country that is also there in the congo like in fact we have other neighboring countries where they are but they are citizens of those countries we have 100,000 people originating from this community, 100,000 who are, have been living here in Rwanda in refugee camps for the last two decades. Why? Because they are being uprooted from their ancestral homes, persecuted, and sent across. In fact, there are more in Uganda there are 300, there's 100,000 here, there are hundreds of thousands there in, in Uganda, more numbers. So, M23 is born out of that situation. Let's now head to Southern Africa, where the death toll from the sinking of a makeshift ferry boat off the north coast of Mozambique has risen to 96. Local authorities report that severely overcrowded makeshift ferry carrying roughly 130 passengers capsized off the northern coast near Nampula province. Nampula's Secretary of State, Jamie Neto, confirmed the tragedy, citing the vessel's unsuitability for passenger transport and overcrowding as the cause of sinking. He added that rescue efforts are underway, hampered by rough sea conditions. So far, five survivors have been pulled from the wreckage, but the search continues amidst challenging weather. NATO revealed that the passengers were attempting to reach an island off the coast, likely driven by panic due to misinformation about cholera outbreaks in the mainland. Então, chegar até entrar no parco um número mais avançado e o parco não se portou com o número que já tinha levado. Então, chegou de afrontar o parco e acabou de ser morto da gente que estava. 
Still ahead. Germany, Nicaragua trade words at Gaza genocide case. We'll bring you details after the break. Now, in other news uh, from around the world, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump says abortion rights should be left up to U.S. states to decide. This comes after months of mixed signals on one of the November's election's most contentious flashpoints. Trump's November opponent, U.S. President Joe Biden, is a devout Catholic but has stood firm in his support for abortion access stating repeatedly that if Congress tries to enact a national abortion ban, he will veto it. In his statement, Trump did not mention a national abortion ban, potentially leaving himself some room as Republicans struggle to stake out a definitive line on the issue. Now, for decades, conservatives have championed the issue, but it is unpopular with the wider American public. Nicaragua has told the International Court of Justice in The Hague that it was pathetic for Germany to give weapons to the Israeli government while simultaneously providing aid to Gaza. The Central American nation is demanding judges impose emergency measures to stop Berlin from providing Israel with weapons and other assistance. Germany's representative, speaking outside the court, said her country rejected the charges, calling Nicaragua's case grossly biased. Germany is to respond on Tuesday. In Gaza, to provide humanitarian aid, including through airdrops, on the one hand, and to furnish the weapons and military equipment that are used to kill and annihilate them, and to kill also humanitarian aid workers, as most recently evidenced by the missile attack against vehicles and workers of World Central Kitchen, on the other hand. Germany does not and never did violate the Genocide Convention nor international humanitarian law, neither directly nor indirectly. Ge Nicaragua's presentation was grossly biased, and we will be telling you tomorrow how we fully live up to our responsibilities. Thank you very much. And now in the world of sports, the NNL board has imposed a fine of 1 million naira on Jigawa Golden Stars for their, few, for their failure to ensure adequate security during their match day 13 encounter against Sporting Supreme in duty. Now, this decision aims to maintain the integrity of the second tier league and deter other teams from engaging in unprofessional behavior. Additionally, the center referee, Zaharuddin Nasaru from Katana State, and his assistant, Usman Awelu from Borno State, have been banned from officiating further matches in the country's domestic leagues due to their poor performance. A viral video depicted the referee allowing a goal scored with the hand and controversially awarding a penalty that contributed to Jigawa Golden Star's 2-1 victory. Felix Auger Alassim has moved on to the round of 32 at the Monte Carlo Masters after his dominant win over Luca Nardi on Monday and will now face Spanish star Carlos Alcaraz. Oga Lissim dismissed Nardi 6-2, 6-3 in a dominant all-round display to claim only his second win in five appearances in Monte Carlo, the place the Canadian lives and trains. This is the first time Alcaraz will meet Oga Lissim on clay court having edged him in five previous encounters, 3-2 across other surfaces. Alcaraz, who received a first-round bye in the Principality, was limited in practice on Monday, hitting few foreheads, forehands, while again wearing a bandage on his right forearm. 
Two-time Grand Slam champion Alcaraz has yet to win a match at Monte Carlo in his career. And that's all at this hour. But before we go, let's take another look at some of our top stories. You heard that Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria has sacked eight directors, 32 others. You also heard that Edo State Governor has sworn in Godwins as Deputy Governor. We also told you that Rwanda's president has defended M23 rebels' actions in DR Congo. Send your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen. Do follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can watch New Central live on DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, Avo TV, and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I'm Darshan Usman.